What is up, folks? Bristol Gaming, we are here with a special episode of 7 Days to Die Mods Weekly, the show will help figure out what mods are good for you. And this episode is super cool. It is brought to us by the awesome folks over at Pseudo Posse who have created the 7 Days to Die Mod Gen graphic user interface that allows ultimate accessibility to everyone. It creates mods for you. It takes a lot of the hard work out of what XML do I tweak? What do I do with this? How do I do this? And just at a click of a button, you've got awesome mods. In the description below, there are two links. There's a link to their video where they described how to use it and kind of walk through the process. And then there's also a link to their Patreon where you can download it for free. You do not have to be a supporter to download it. They've prov they've provided it for free. It's just on their Patreon. So you see, I've got my my downloads folder here. I have a 7 days that I mods folder here. And I have a mod gen GUI folder on my desktop. So after you've downloaded it, what you want to do is you want to come and drag it over to wherever you want it, or you could just extract it to your downloads if you want to. But I moved it over to my mod gen GUI folder and then I'm going to click, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say, come down to WinRAR and I'm going to say extract here and then let it do its extraction. And honestly, you don't even have to do that. If you don't want to, you could like, if we had left this here, we could just do this and just move it over. We could double click it open and then drag it over. There's a lot of different options. It's, it's user preference, but my computer doesn't want to refresh and show that it's there for some reason. So once it pulls up, I will warn you, if you're using Norton, it may flag the EXE. So you may have to restore it. Norton's kind of notorious for being a pain in the butt like that. I don't know why. But now that we've got this open, we're going to come, we're going to click into it. And we're going to say seven days to die directory. That's where we want to go. So in this right here, we see the save file directory. This is where we're going to assign what mods we generate. You got two choices. I have it. I want it to go straight to my seven days to die folder through steam. So I've gone into steam and just to show you again, real quick, I'll pull up my steam. Here's my steam page. I click on seven days to die. I come here. I say, manage browse, you browse local files. And it's going to pop up my steam page. And it's going to show me this right here. This is my steam page. And then just come into files or come into mods, right click on it. Here we go. If you don't have a mods folder here, right click, select new folder and name it mods. If you don't want to install there, if you want to follow the app data roaming seven days to die mods, then you want to change this highlighted portion here to whatever your PC name is. If your PC name is just computer, if you have it named as snarty Beltfast, whatever your PC name is, that's what you want to change it to. Cause that's the directory. It's going to assign it. I don't have it like that. Instead, I'm just going to copy and paste and then I'm going to click save. And then now we're going to come back down here and you'll see once we get into it, it's going to generate mods there. So once you've done that step, it's the, I think the 22nd item down is the seven days to die mods gen GUI. I could be wrong. My count could be off, but this right here, the seven days to die mod gen GUI, this is what we want. We're going to double click on it and it's going to take a second to pop up. But once it does, you're greeted with something really cool. So once it pops up, this is what we see. So this is the homepage for it. We've got a video tutorial link here. We've got a link to their Patreon again. It's super cool that they have all this set up. But this is where the magic happens. Over here, we have zombies, defenses, vehicles, items, player, loot, trader, environment. Then we're going to click on zombies. So let's say we want to play with the zombie reach because the zombies you know, can hit us from like a mile away. So we're going to click on this and we're going to click melee range for all the normal zombies. And we have a little highlight that says activate to enable zombie stats modding. So the hit distance is default 1.65. We can tweak that down to 1.45. And I will say this gives you the option on some of these things to be able to change this. If 1.45 is too, still too far for some people, you can change it to 1.25. You can change it to one. I'm going to leave it to what they have is 1.45 and this, the cops I'm going to take down to 1.55 and then I'm going to click on generate mods. And then down here in our mods folder, we have zombie range range. I don't know why it has it twice, but that's just what it did. So we're like, okay, cool. We got the range we want on the zombie attacks, but now we want to mess with this biomes before we, before we move on, we need to backtrack a step and we're going to de-click the zombie stats and click zombies, biome zombies. And then we're going to come here to biome zombies. 
This tells the GUI what mods you're generating for. So you're not trying to generate multiple zombie stat stuff. We're just going to focus on zombie and the biomes. So let's say we want to make the, the, the forest a little bit harder and we want to make the wasteland just absolutely punishing and the snow absolutely punishing. So we're going to take, we're just going to change just the max count. That's all we want to tweak right now. We don't want to tweak the respawn time or any of that. We just want the max count to change in the wasteland and the snow because the desert has vultures, which is enough. And, you know, we'll even do burnt forest. We'll do burnt forest and we'll create, you know, we'll increase the, the amount on burnt forest. Well, now that we've done that, we click generate mods. And down here in our mods folder, we see increased zombies. Okay, cool. Well, now we want to tweak the loot drops from zombies. Again, we're going to unclick biome and click on loot drops and then come back over here and click on loot drops. Think of this as sequential. This is step A, step B, step, or well, you say like 1A and then 2A. And then that's how you move forward. So the drop probability, we want, instead of being 0 0.05, we want it at 0 0.15. A lot higher. And then time to despawn because, you know, Horde Knights, can, you might not always have a chance. We're going to say we want it at 900 seconds. And then we click Generate Mods. And now we have Pseudo Posse Zombie Loot. But that's not the only stuff we can play with. Let's say we wanted to play with some of the other stuff, like the environment. Well, we want daylight length to be 100% of the time. We don't want night at all. Night sucks. It's too dark. We don't like it. You could change this from 22, or we can delete these to, to make it straight 24. So this is how it's got it. That's the amount of hours. 8, 12, 18, 14. And that gives you the selection size when you're in game to be able to change it from 8 to 10, 12, 14, or 22 hours. And you can even add a 24 on there if you want to. The random world sizes, this lets you select different size random worlds you want to generate. You want to generate up to a 15K, you select this, and then we go ahead and click generate. And then now here we have world size customizer. Okay, but let's say we don't want to do that. We didn't want to do that. We didn't want to do world settings at all. We only want to do biome difficulty because we want to make some of the difficulties a lot harder. Well, we want to make the pine forest just ridiculously punishing. So we're going to set the loot sage monitor, uh, everything just really high because it's going to make everything harder. Harder zombies are going to spawn. Yes, we'll get more loot and stuff, but it's also going to make it a lot harder. That's what we wanted. Well, now we have biome difficulty. And that's what this does. Each level every time they come up with new stuff they're adding things all the time you see we don't have anything under trader right now but we have water filters we want more water filters so we want dew collector we can make the dew collector you know guaranteed dew collector every single time every time you loot a dew collector you're guaranteed to get a water filter you don't want that you want very low we'll set it to very low probability from a workbench Actually, you know what? We'll say from probability from a dew collector, we'll say medium. Probability from a workbench, really low. From a chemistry station, kind of makes sense for medium, low, maybe. Working stiff crate, we'll say very low. Passing grass cate, crate, we don't want it from a passing grass cate. Passing grass, wow. All right. uh. <laughs> we don't want it from the loot bags either. We don't want it from a blue or a red. Coolers either. We only want it from a workbench, a chemistry station, or a working stiff crate. We want it like that, then we can click generate, and now we have add water filter to loot. Player, we want more skill points per level. We can click on this. Let's say we want 10 skill points per level. Lunabug did this. I don't like that necessarily, but that was her choice. But it's really cool that they've given us the ability to choose what we want. Items, we want to increase the stack size. We don't want a stack size of that. We want a stack size of 20,000. Boom, there we go. Vehicles, we want the vehicle speed. We want the bicycle to the velocity. We want it to be as high as it absolutely can. We want it to just shoot down the street, right? Boom, there we go. And the cool thing is, is if you change anything after you've already generated a mod, like we have the vehicle speed, if we, if we click here and we change all of these and then generate again, it overrides the previous mod with the new selections. So you can tweak and play around until you find that sweet spot. You don't have to delete that folder. It just overrides it for you. This, this mod GUI is far and away one of the most awesome things I've seen for mod generation. 
ever. And like I said, everything on this pretty much is server side. I have yet to see anything that is not server side. And I say pretty much because I don't know what they're going to add for the future. If it gets to a point where it can add custom, like custom POIs, custom weapons, custom armor, anything like that, I think that would be just mind boggling. The folks over at Pseudoposse have created something though that really opens up the accessibility. It opens up the gameplay to ultimate customization of how you want the game to be. You can play the game your way. And the best part of this is, is you can still add other mods in to add extra zombies or weapons or do all these other things until, or if they can't add them to this, then you can still do it yourself. But this gives you almost unparalleled levels of customization for the, just the general world itself. If they keep going along the progression path that they've made, we've got the way to be able to make the game play how we want with one quick touch of a button. And I love that they've opened this up for everybody to be able to use because they could have locked this behind a paywall, which would have been unfortunate, but they didn't. They kept it open for everyone. So pseudo posse again, thank you guys so much for this. I have had a lot of fun being able to play with this and Luna bug has as well because she plays by herself sometimes and having mods that she can come in and tweak herself as she feels like it's just, it's the best thing in the world for her. So thank you guys so much for the hard work that you've put in. We are actually done with this episode, folks. I hope you liked it. Pseudo Posse, I hope I have managed to do your work justice. If you guys like the episode, go ahead, like, subscribe, drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think. But have fun, take it easy, and we will see you next time.